Hey Brain Stuff, it's Lauren. Let's take a look at the night sky. If you're lucky enough to have a clear view of the heavens, then you'll see something like this. A panoply of beautiful stars twinkling away, a breathtaking assortment of colors and sizes. A few of them have ancient names, like Vega or Aldebaran. But who decides what to call them? Can you name a star yourself? Well, yes. And no. See, there's a difference between a star's popular name and its scientific designation. For example, Vega is the popular name of a star, but its Bayer designation is Alpha Lear. There are loads of groups claiming to name stars, but they are by no means created equal. You know those companies that offer to let you name a star after a loved one, or yourself if you're, you know, that sort of person? It might not be fair to call them scams, but it is fair to say that their names are in no way legally binding. Nor are they, again, in any way recognized by the astronomical community. The only group that can really name a star is the International Astronomical Union, or IAU. Since its founding in 1919, the IAU has been the ultimate authority on the names and designations of stars, along with other astronomical objects. Star names typically come about in three ways. First, they can be inherited from an ancient language, like Greek, Latin, or Arabic. Second, they might be named after an influential astronomer, such as Bernard's star, a red dwarf named after its discoverer. Most stars aren't that lucky. Instead of a proper name, they get a designation in a catalog. This means that, legally speaking, the majority of the stars above us are just known by strings of numbers and letters. You can read about 945 million of them in databases like the Guide Star Catalog or the Galiz Catalog of nearby stars. While these long strings of numbers and letters might not sound particularly romantic, they're necessary. Think of it more like an address rather than a name. With hundreds of millions of known stars, astronomers need some way to find the star again in the course of their work. So, with all this in mind, you might wonder if cozying up to the IAU is a way to get a legit star named after you. Turns out a lot of other people have had the same idea. Eventually, the IAU must have gotten kind of sick of it because they posted a statement about it on their website. In their statement, they disavow any connection to groups selling star naming rights. They also warn readers not to buy any extraterrestrial real estate, you know, lunar suburbs, a loft on Europa, and so on which apparently people try to do every now and then. But there is good news. While you can't buy a star's name, you can make suggestions and even launch public naming campaigns. In 2013, the IAU released some guidelines in a piece called Public Naming of Planets and Planetary Satellites. Check it out for some handy tips. For example, a proposed name has to be 16 letters or less, preferably one word, and non-offensive. So, there go half of my ideas. They strongly discourage people from suggesting the name of a beloved pet or a commercial product. Which makes sense, you know? Twinkle Twinkle Little Air Jordans just doesn't have quite the same ring to it. So I want to know, what would you name a star if you had the chance? Tell me in the comments. Send us a like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video and want to see the next one. And for lots more stuff about everything from stars to other things that begin with S, check out HowStuffWorks.com.